Tonight on CTV News, a look at the Republican debate that took place in Boulder on Wednesday night and an update on the changing polls. Also, the Larimer County Sheriff's Office is asking for help to identify a robbery suspect. Plus a preview of the upcoming events for Native American Heritage Month. All this along with weather, sports, and entertainment coming up right now. Good evening, Fort Collins. I'm Carson bush -Jose. And I'm Grace Reeder. Thanks for tuning in to CTV News. CNBC and CU Boulder held the third Republican debate of the season last night. Boulder hosted 11 Republican candidates, and they had quite a bit to say about topics like abortion and taxation. According to the Coloradoans' poll of who won the debate, 43.5% of their viewership said Donald Trump won, with Marco Rubio trailing him at 17.5%. These numbers are starkly different from the primary poll showing Ben Carson is the front runner in the race for the primary. Collegian reporter Ellie Mulder was at the event and heard from candidates like Donald Trump. You weren't Are the you star tonight? Was that tough not to be the star? I don't know what you mean by the star. Like the focus, like all the questions weren't at you. Was well, I think it was out. very unfair. I mean, it's become very unfair. Uh, I think that I did very well. According to all of the online polls, I got 80% as a win. So, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people are sending their numbers in. According to every single online poll, I'm 70 to 80 percent with a win. I thought it was great. I thought I did well, and I thought everyone did well. I really enjoyed the debate. What's Why do you think the media went out? The Larimer County Sheriff's Office is asking the public for help in identifying a robbery suspect. The Sheriff's Office has released from the October 20th robbery that occurred at the Hazy Hippo. The suspect threatened a person at the counter with a metal baton from the store. The victim pointed a firearm at the suspect who then fled the scene. The suspect is described as a Hispanic male in his late teens with short dark hair between 5 feet 7 inches and 5 feet 9 inches. He was last seen wearing a blue t-shirt and black pants. If you have any information, contact the Sheriff's Office at 970-416-1985. The Colorado State Patrol is emphasizing a zero tolerance policy on distracted driving. Larimer County has the 10th highest rate of texting while driving violations in the state. The Colorado State Patrol issued more than 436 citations for distracted driving during its Zero Zero campaign earlier this month. The average time your eyes are off the road while sending or receiving a text is 4.6 seconds. In that amount of time, you are traveling the length of a football field. Nationally, more than 3,000 people were killed in 2013 due to distracted drivers. Last Wednesday, October 21st, marked CSU's 29th annual Cans Around the Oval Food Drive. It's the culmination of a five to six week long charity event put on by Slice. Cans Around the Oval is the largest food drive in northern Colorado, and 2015 was a record breaking year with over 60,000 pounds of food and over $50,000 donated. The College of Business took first place in the mini food drive competition against other CSU colleges. Jen Rieskamp, the program director for Slice, explains the food drive's success. One dollar equals five pounds of food and so that was part of the reason um, that we had such a great year is that the food bank is just significantly, um, they're just able to take our donation and take it significantly farther than they have before. So we were able to collect around fifty seven thousand um, dollars and sixty thousand pounds of food this year which we did a great job and I think total impact of that would be around three hundred and forty five thousand pounds. November will be a busy month for the Native American Cultural Center on campus. They'll be hosting events throughout the month to give students and the public a chance to learn more about Native American culture. Next month, the Native American Cultural Center at CSU is hosting events to honor Native American Heritage Month. We typically kick off the month with our big powwow, so that'll be on Saturday, the 31st, October 31st, because it's a fairly um, large event. It's one of the biggest um, powwows in this region. Um, around this time. So definitely has a lot of draw um, from Fort Collins community members, students, as well as even in the Denver area. All events hosted by the Native American Cultural Center are free and open to students. Sometimes there's some apprehension there, but anyone is welcome and it's an opportunity to get involved with the Native community on campus um, as well as in the Fort Collins community. Another fun event to attend during the month is the hip hop concert. Featuring Frank Wallen and the Sampson Brothers. And so Frank is a Lakota hip hop artist and he was actually featured on MTV's Rebel Music this summer. But if you're more into art than music, there are also events for you. Out here in the Duhesa Gallery, um, collaborating with Campus Activities, we'll be showcasing um, Native art from an artist um, who is going to be coming to campus and talking about her work. The month is aimed to get students, staff, and community members involved in Native American culture. 
kind of what we really hope to do throughout the month is provide opportunities for students and staff and faculty and community members to come learn a little bit more about uh, Native culture, understanding that we have a large Native population on campus. Check out next week's Thursday CTV show for a look at the powwow dance being put on by the Native American Cultural Center. Coming up after the break, the weekend weather forecast from Sierra Symes. Don't go away, Ram. CTV will be right back. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State, on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out Collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. I'm weather anchor Sierra Symes and you're gonna need a coat tonight but wait is that a skeleton in your closet no it's it's just me here in the CTV studio welcome back um, it is currently mostly cloudy and 48 degrees here in Fort Collins which is pretty mild but don't be tricked it's gonna be, get pretty chilly tonight for tonight we are gonna be boarding 20s and 30s along the western slope with a 41 in Grand Junction up the I-25 corridor high 30s 40 in Denver though 38 here in Fort Collins along the eastern plains we are seeing mid 30s in Lyman and Sterling high 30s in Burlington and Lamar. Looking into tomorrow, your 8 a.m. is cool at 40 degrees with gusts up to 20 miles per hour from the north in the afternoon. 50s to finish off your work day. For the highs, we're going to be seeing some 50s along the western slope with 40s in Vail, Gunnison, and Telluride. The I-25 corridor is seeing low 50s with a high 50 in Pueblo. Along the eastern plains, we are also going to be seeing 50s. Clouds for the end of the week, but with a treat on Halloween, we are going to be seeing some clear skies for the afternoon and into the evening. Pretty mild temperatures over the weekend and cool for the lows. Monday, the sun is going to peak out again, but before long, we have a system that will bring us a chance of showers in the middle of next week. Friday, hopefully our women's soccer team can wrangle a win against Wyoming, the Wyoming Cowboys at 3. Football is hosting San Diego State on Saturday at 3 p.m. We'll take a look at what the weather is going to be like that for that in just a minute. And if you haven't gotten an early start to your Halloween night, our volleyball team is playing Nevada at 7.30 in the Moby Arena. Let's take a look at the weather for those outside games. Friday, the game shouldn't be affected too much by the temperatures, mostly cloudy, low high highs, low, sorry, low 50s, high 40s, but by, uh, we're going to have some gusts coming from the west at kickoff. And for the players, neither team will have an advantage as the Lagoon Field and the north-south facing field. So if you're going to be attending, bundle up. For Saturday, we are going to be seeing some 50s and also popping into 61 by the fourth quarter. It's going to be mostly cloudy with 20 mile per hour gusts coming from the west. That will go away by that fourth quarter. The temperatures, again, are going to be high 50s bordering low 60s. What about Saturday night? Well, at 7 p.m., we will have clear skies for those early trick-or-treaters and a just waning full moon that will light up the evening evening sky. For the evening, we're going to have 50s that will fall into mid 40s by 10 p.m. But with wind chill, it should feel closer to 40 degrees. So for those of you staying out late, the overnight low is 41 and we will almost reach that by midnight. And after midnight, keep an eye out or rather a telescope out for the great pumpkin asteroid, which is expected to miss Earth by just 300,000 miles. It sounds far away, but it actually is a close pass on a cosmic scale. That's all the weather I have for you. Up next, sports anchor Olivia Landis will give you her spooky sports update right after the break. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Yes. Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to getschool.com. 
Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Welcome back from the break, folks. I'm sports anchor Olivia Landis with your latest CSU sports updates. And boy, do we have a lot of sports for you. With the Colorado State football team coming off of a bye week, the Rams now look to prepare for a home game this Saturday to host San Diego State. The Aztecs are currently the only undefeated team in the Mountain West. Let's take a look at what CSU head coach Mike Bobo had to say about preparing his team during this bye week. We pushed them uh, today as far as the tempo and the pace and were able to kind of go fast in practice and they responded well and I thought the receivers did a nice job of running hard even though we were a little bit low uh, on depth. By now the CSU volleyball team must be getting tired of racking in the awards with individual players. Um. On Monday, middle blocker Alexandra Paletta was named Mountain West Offensive Player of the Week. This marks Paletta's first honor of her career and came after she tallied 19 kills on only three attack errors this past week. To no surprise, senior Adriana Colbert was named as the ESPNW National Player of the Week earlier today, after posting her seventh triple-double while taking on Boise State. CSU is currently at Moby Arena hosting San Diego State, so make sure to support the number 20 ranked Rams after the show. Well folks, it is nearing the end of October, but Halloween isn't the only thing sending chills down everyone's back. The fact that basketball season is right around the corner may just be enough excitement to send you jumping out of your seat. Earlier this morning, Colorado State announced that the Rams men's basketball exhibition opener is scheduled for Saturday, November 7th versus CSU Pueblo. Tip-off will be at 7 p.m. at Moby Arena in order to accommodate fans wanting to catch both the CSU men's basketball opener and the annual football board of war against rival Wyoming. The Thunder Wolves come to Moby Arena ranked second in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference preseason coaches poll with senior Bronson Moten named preseason All-RMAC as a member of the all-conference team. Tickets for the game can be bought online or at the McGraw ticket office on campus. Well, that's all the sports I have for tonight, but don't go away because coming up next is entertainment anchor Gabe Pocras with a spooky spoof on Halloween Classic. We'll be right back. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Hello, fellow Rams. Welcome back from the break. I have nothing but treats for you tonight. No tricks, I promise. Let's get started, though. All right, Halloween is this weekend. The best way to get ready is, of course, to watch scary movies. Did you know that I was actually in a big Hollywood horror movie? Let's just say that I'm not much help, and I got away from the bad guy. Sorry. What? Don't look at me. It's a sneeze. I can't help that. It's just bad timing. We 
don't you quit looking at me. He passed us. We're fine. We're in the clear. Just be quiet. And now you're gonna cover your mouth and be quiet? After you just screamed at him? You know what? Are you getting back at me because I took the last pizza pizza yesterday? It was meat lovers. You're a vegetarian. I figured it meant that was my last piece. Get over it. have in your hand? Is that a knife? Don't do it! Sorry, I, I have a wedgie! Crap, he just started his chainsaw. I'm gonna book it. You're crazy. You're absolutely insane. As you can see, I made it out alive and escaped from Leatherface. My friend on the other hand, let's just say she's not around these days. Leatherface is a horror movie icon, so it would not be surprising if a lot of people dressed up as him this year. I actually asked students on the plaza today what their costume ideas for Halloween were. And the answers I got were pretty spine tingling. So what are you going to be for Halloween this year? Uh, I am going to be a pony from My Little Pony, <laughs> Friendship is Magic. Okay. I'm going to be Morticia Adams. I think I'm going to be a cat burglar. Okay. Just a bunch of cats in a bag. <laughs> Not real ones. Not real. Okay. Are you sure? Pretty, pretty sure. <laughs> this year I'm going as Wayne from Wayne's World, and my friend's going as Garth. So it's gonna be pretty good. Jimmy Graham before he left the Saints. <laughs> that's that's good, but that's gonna be sad. You're gonna be pretty sad all night. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so does your the friend who's playing Garth? Uh, is it he or she? It's a he. Does he have blonde hair, or is he gonna throw on the wig? Um, he is a tall Asian man, so he's going to wear a wig. <laughs> What's the most creative costume you've ever seen during Halloween? Um, I saw two people dressed up as cat dog ones, and that was really good. A full body set of armor. Last year a guy was a twister board. I once had this friend in high school whose name was Belle, and then she dressed up as a taco, so she was Taco Bell. Did people kick him? I would have kicked him. If it was like left yeah. foot yellow, I would have just kicked him. Yeah, some people did. As a kid, what was your favorite childhood costume? I was Poe from the Teletubbies. Probably being a bat, that was pretty cool. My mom just put like a trash bag over me. That was pretty <laughs> <laughs> And suffocated you. <laughs> yeah, no, it was fun. I'm, I'm here today. I had this um, custom costume that my grandmother made me that was a lion, and it was the best thing in the world. I was a weird child. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, that was awesome. Those are all great ideas. Picking a costume in college can be a hassle. It was so much easier being a kid and having your parents pick one out for you. I actually asked our CTV family to send in their childhood Halloween costumes, and they look great. Let's take a look. All right, so that's Bryn Carbon. She's our CTV manager, and that was her being Juno when she was young. And we actually brought the rest of our anchors out to kind of talk about it because our next one actually is Grace Reader, oh, Grace. our news inter anchor. Look, you're an elephant. <laughs> I was. That was oh, a warm yeah. costume. That was so adorable. You look pretty <laughs> sad though. Wooly. Well, I mean, look, you even have a sad. trunk. <laughs> oh. All right, let's look at the next one. 
Oh, Bailey Lakey, she's another anchor on Wednesdays. She is just as adorable as That's she was. So I cute. know, she's got the same, a she little adorable face. Yeah. Small T Rex. <laughs> oh. She was short. Look at her compared to that table. That's pretty <laughs> short. <laughs> All right, very let's, intimidating. <laughs> yeah. let's take a look in the next one. Julio. All right, that's our producer, Julio. Oh and my goodness. He was Woody. <laughs> that's so cute. I like the picture on the left. <laughs> that's even better. I'm glad you said that one. All right, let's move on to the next one. Ah, oh, Carson. Uh, what were you? Uh, I was a safari guide. Come on. <laughs> no, no, I mean on the left. What <laughs> were you? Oh. I don't know. Who found that photo? <laughs> I don't know either. The depths of Facebook. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> Please. And hey. Sierra. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You look pretty happy. My I like the cheeks. My last name is Polish, so they dressed me up as like a Polish maiden. Oh, okay. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm, I like that. Got the pose going on, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. You jump really high on the left side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have for you guys tonight. Uh, make sure to tune in to CTV News next week, and don't forget to visit the, visit the Collegian website for the latest Fort Collins news. From all of us here at CTV, have a great weekend, and have a safe Halloween, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs>